In our last episode, we talked about the importance of coming to understand the demosaicing or debayering techniques used to combine the red, green, and blue channels of a color camera. In the early days of digital color cameras, recombining the red, green, and blue channels or demosaicing them could cause the loss of up to 20% of the detail in an image. And this undoubtedly played a tremendous role in the preference for monochrome cameras in astrophotography. After all, if you're going to go through the trouble of setting out your telescope, mounts, and associated equipment, get it aligned, and spend one, two, or three nights keeping that scope trained on a single target to get the best image possible, then you wanted to get every last bit of detail out of that image and relay it as accurately and beautifully as possible. But happily, things have come a long way since the early days of digital photography. And deal mosaicing has become a much more efficient process, preserving the vast majority of the information found on a one-shot color camera. And over the past several decades, during which time the digital camera has evolved, quite a few demosaicing techniques have co-evolved. They offer us data retention up to 15% higher than that original 80%. And each one has its own particular pros and cons, best and worst use cases. So when you use your one shot color camera to shoot your image by night and hopefully in the morning discover that everything has gone well, well, like every other astrophotographer who uses a one shot color camera, you're going to have to process the data. Probably the two most popular programs at present for doing that are Cyril, which is free and PixInsight, which is paid. Cyril's preferred method of processing color camera information is the RCD method of demosaicing. RCD stands for Ratio Corrected Demosaicing, and Cyril describes it as a demosaicing strategy that tends to smooth the color correction errors that are common in many other interpolation methods. Cyril also states that it does an excellent job for stars and therefore is the default demosaicing method found in Cyril. Today, we're going to process the same data of NGC 5457, the Pinwheel Galaxy, which I shot last month when the supernova in the outer arm was showing, and compare this demosaicing method with PixInsight's default method, the VNG method, which stands for variable number of gradients. This is not my best image. It represents only three hours on the galaxy. I had intended to shoot it all night, but the weather had other plans. Still, we're going to make do with what we have and use it because a full spectrum target like a galaxy filled with stars and gases and surrounded with more local stars from our own galaxy is an excellent opportunity to study the pros and cons and strengths and weaknesses of various demosaicing methods. The image that you are presently seeing above has been demosaiced with the RCD algorithm. Not only does it provide good star shapes, as Cyril says in the description of this algorithm, but the RCD method shows good, evenly dark space. Right off the bat, I can tell that it does very well at portraying dim regions within an image as well. Let's see how PixInsight performs on the same data using its preferred VNG method of demosaicing. By the way, Cyril also offers the VNG method of demosaicing, though I haven't tried it in Cyril, and Cyril may handle it a little differently from PixInsight. As PixInsight offers VNG, and PixInsight is paid professional software for processing astrophotography images, I assumed that PixInsight would probably handle the application of the VNG algorithm a bit better. PixInsight has finished demosaicing the data, and in the finished image, we can see a number of differences right off. For one, the detail in the image, especially in the galaxy, is sharper. The stars and gaseous nebulae are portrayed with better pinpoint accuracy. There are, however, some downsides to the VNG method of demosaicing. If you look at the far outer arm on the right, it's just barely visible, the, the slightest little wisp of light. You can see that there is almost no detail there at all, just the faintest hints of its actual existence. And if you look in the darkness of the space all around the galaxy, you can see that there is a lot more color noise. So the VNG algorithm gives us more detail, though the original image after demosaicing is dimmer and does not portray faint objects before processing. When we compare the RCD and the VNG method side by side, the RCD method brings out a bit more contrast than the VNG method, at least in the initial demosaic image that has not yet undergone processing. And that faint outermost arm on the right of the pinwheel, it's still dim, but you can clearly see it in the RCD method on the left. Whereas 
In the image demosaic through VNG on the right, that faint outer arm is almost completely invisible. And if you study the center of the pinwheel galaxy in both images, you can see in the RCD method on the left that the contrast causes the depth between the arms, especially the arms at the center of the galaxy, to really stand out. But there is less difference of subtle shading, meaning the detail, or rather, the fine detail is lost. Whereas the detail is dimmer in the VNG demosaicing method, but the fine detail is better preserved. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and process each image. I'd like to tell you that I'm going to do them the exact same way, but the truth is that would not be fair. I'm going to use the same processes on each image, but I'll use each of those processes differently, aiming to bring out the best possible detail from the original RAW images. We're going to start with a version of the Pinwheel Galaxy processed through RCD demosaicing. This will involve the usual color calibration and green removal, a histogram stretch, curve adjustment, application of the blur and noise exterminators, and final curve adjustment focusing on luminance and saturation. And even as I'm working with the image, I am noticing how smooth and dark the space is. It's, it's quite free of color noise. And even the dimmest of light is readily visible within the image. And here is the finished image. The RCD algorithm really does a great job bringing up even the dimmest light, making that almost invisible outer arm visible even though this image does not have enough data to make a really good shot of the pinwheel. Unfortunately, while the RCD demosaicing method has done a great job bringing up dim lights and giving us nice smooth dark space, it, as you can see, is very prone to artifacts. We have strange central circular artifacts within the stars, and in the bright area in the center of the galaxy, we have yet more artifacts. Now, that area is not clipped. I did not overexpose it, as you'll see when we get around to processing the image that was demosaic with VNG. That's an artifact unique to the RCD method of demosaicing. And you're going to see some other problems with the RCD method of demosaicing when we compare the images side by side. So now we're going to go ahead and go through the same method of processing the image created with the VNG demosaicing method. Well, almost the same method. We'll use the same processes, but we're going to apply them as the image requires to bring out the best possible image here. As always, we'll start with a color calibration and using the SCNR to remove the excess green, stretch the image, apply the blur exterminator and the noise exterminator, and then we'll go with another curves adjustment, this time focusing on making the best of the saturation, both the individual green channels and all of them together, as well as getting the luminance right. And in the course of processing this, I can tell you that it is easier to work with the VNG demosaicing method, mainly because I'm not struggling to cope with those artifacts, trying to find some way to get rid of them in the course of processing this data. I have, for all intents and purposes, a nice clean image to work with. I just have to take some additional effort to bring up the dark outer arms and make them more visible. And here, you can see the final image. It's not too different from what we got with the RCD method, but there are some significant differences. The most obvious of which is we don't have those strange, undesirable circular artifacts in the center of the brighter stars and in the center of the galaxy. And as we noted earlier, the detail of the galaxy is finer, more precise and pinpoint. Though we can see there is a considerable amount of noise in the space, it doesn't have that nice, dark, even smoothness that we saw with the RCD method of demosaicing. In fact, there is an odd red and blue blotchiness throughout the space that, try as I might, I could not quite get rid of. I could remove it with some more advanced processing, but I don't want to do so here. I just wanted to show the differences right off the bat between the two demosaicing methods. And here with the two demosaicing methods compared side by side, the differences really stand out. The RCD method on the left, as we already noted, presents richer, deeper blacks that are very easy to work with in terms of looking for the darkness of space. But the strange artifacts in the bright area are very difficult to get rid of using any technique available in PixInsight. On the other hand, while we have great contrast and the brightness is elevated very well, we quite simply lose a lot of detail. Detail, which when we look at the image processed through VNG on the right, we can see is conserved. The VNG method does a really good job at 
showing us subtle traces of nebulae within the pinwheel galaxy, its red gases. I won't say that you can see its individual stars, at least not with my little 80 millimeter telescope and its inherent limitations, but you can certainly and easily detect much finer detail. Not to mention the lack of the artifacts is very nice, making the image much easier to deal with. Though, as you can see, we have the unfortunate presence of a mottled patchy noise of red and blue throughout the regions of dark space. So, if I had to pick between just one demosaicing method, I would say that VNG wins because, above all, I want to retain the detail. I can use advanced processing methods to get rid of that mottled noise and then use other somewhat advanced methods, such as the different noise suppression algorithms to be found in another application like Affinity Photo, and various background extraction techniques from PixInsight and elsewhere to darken and smooth out the space. But you know what? That's labor-intensive, and astrophotography is complex enough already. Wouldn't it be better if I could take advantage of both processing methods both the strength of RCD to give us nice, dark, rich space and help bring up dim objects, along with VNG's ability to give us nice, sharp detail and, and really bring out the resolution in objects? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how. Though you're going to need an application that works in layers, like Affinity Photo to do it with. You could probably also do this in Photoshop. I'm not sure because I don't use Photoshop. But typically anything Photoshop does, Affinity Photo does, and vice versa. It's just Affinity Photo costs a tiny, tiny fraction of what Photoshop does. So what I've done here is I have opened a new image in Affinity Photo, and I've placed the VNG demosaic version of the Pinwheel Galaxy as the base layer. And then I dragged the RCD version of the Pinwheel Galaxy over it. With the two images perfectly aligned over one another, I've gone to the Composite Options drop-down menu on the right center, and now I'm just going to look through Affinity Photo's many compositing options to find the best way to overlay the RCD image on top of the VNG image. One of the things I love about Affinity Photo is how easy it is to composite two images together, and Affinity Photo offers a, a plethora, a real multitude of ways to go about compositing. Some of them can give bizarre and entirely unexpected results, some of them can give beautiful and unexpected results. But here, what we want to do is add the luminosity of the RCD image on top of the VNG image. Thus, we can combine the best of the RCD demosaicing method's ability to present light and dark regions with the best of VNG's method to conserve detail, and ultimately end up with an image that portrays the strengths of both demosaicing methods. And in the end, it is the light and compositing method that does what we want best. We get nice dark space, a bright contrasted galaxy with shadow details conserved, small fine detail preserved within the stardust lanes, and the star of the show, the supernova beside the nebulae, top center of the outer arm, is beautifully presented. Now I'll just apply a little bit more of Affinity Photo's magic to adjust the curves and the fine detail just a little bit. And then we get the finished product. A pretty decent image of the pinwheel galaxy complete with supernova, even though we were only working with a few hours of data from a night that it got cloudy way earlier than the weatherman was predicting. So remember, with modern camera technology and modern image processing technology, you can make a one-shot color astro camera do amazing things. And one way to bring out the very best of your camera's capabilities is to learn the advantages and disadvantages of each demosaicing or debayering method so that you can know when to apply and draw on which. Though, if you want to keep things simple, by and large, go with the VNG method. Though, if you're working with very contrasty objects that have some very dim regions that are lost in the VNG method, you can use the RCD method to bring out those dim areas. As a rule, VNG will always give you more detail and the RCD method will always give you a better portrayal of space and a brighter portrayal of any light, any low light within an image. And happily, if you have another application like Affinity Photo, you don't have to pick and choose which one you want to go with. You can simply do mosaic for RCD and VNG, putting most of your energy into the VNG method to bring out and maximize detail, and then just composite the two together so that you can get the very best both RCD and VNG demosaicing have to offer. It's a win-win situation. 
Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.